So Ming, was she in today? Ming? Yeah. 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 Not dizzy. <laughs> We'll wait a minute, yeah. Because otherwise I'll just have to stop anyways once everyone comes in. You know what's happening today at 11 o'clock? 11 p.m.? Uh, I, I, I think. 11 p.m.? Mm. You know what's happening? No? Uh, 11 p.m.? Yeah. Tonight. What's happening? No. No. <laughs> Any? Uh, okay. UK. Oh, oh but the two list. people. No. Leaving. Really? Leaving, yeah. But today I didn't trust in the web website. Oh. Huh? I didn't did find the website. They said English has, like, UK has oh. these people. The, no, no, no. UK oh. are leaving, leaving EU tonight, 11 oh. o'clock. Wow! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I see. Yeah, and also you can have fun. Uh, <laughs> Maybe two cases. Yeah. Maybe two cases. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, yes, they said in the end of January they will leave. Yeah. Really? Last time they always said the same. No, today is real. Today is real. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but what was about the noise of Ireland? No. The same, the same. Uh, so there are borders between Ireland and the sea. They are beautiful. Sea border. Sea border. in the sea. Huh? What sea border? Between Northern Ireland and the UK. Oh, Northern Ireland and the UK. Sea border. Oh. But, well, there are, well, no, there are border between islands and north of Ireland. No. No. Okay. But uh, is uh, uh, Ireland and the UK, I think there is uh, no, no border right now. And it will stay that way. So no, Ireland and Northern Ireland, no border. But uh, in UK, also no border, I think. Because before yeah, but now there will be will between be. Ireland and UK, Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, but no border between Ireland and Northern Ireland. Oh. Yeah. It's good. It's too difficult to have a border. There's too many roads crossing. Yeah. Too difficult. So you can, oh, of the UK people cannot work in the European country in the future? Yeah, they might need a visa. Oh. Yeah. And, that and, and people who live in Europe who want to work in the UK. Oh. I think we'll need a visa too. Oh, so yeah. So it's not free now. Not free anymore. Okay. Not free. Not free movement anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big deal. Yes, they they said this thing and this thing lasts for a year to to move away for Europe. Like They've been wanting to move yeah. for some time. Yes, yeah. yeah. Spend years. <laughs> years, not one year, years. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, today it finally happens at 11 o'clock. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> UK okay. leaves the EU. The UK will be the EU. Yeah. Are you happy about that? Mixed. Mixed <laughs> feelings. But I think it's the Irish press will be increased. 30%. Maybe. We'll have to see what happens. Is that everyone now? No. no. David. David. David and Dami. They are eating their breakfast. Hey, Dami's not What? So in the future, you cannot work in UK any more time? Well, I think um, it might be a little bit different for Ireland. Oh. Uh, it might be easier to get visa. Oh. Yeah. Okay, we'll start with physics questions from the homework. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what lesson? Okay, thank you. Yep, okay. Yeah. What else? Too much and too much. YouTube video also confusing. Which one? <laughs> the last one? 
Well, I can go slower, but it just means that. Yeah, but Bello, you know the first example I did with the principle of moments? Yeah. I spent 12 minutes on that. Like, if you look at the YouTube time, that's yeah, 12 I, minutes. I know. But so, like every question differs. There's always a different scenario for every question. No, I know. And I can go slower. That's no problem. But you understand that if I go slower, then it means when it comes to the exam, there will be some things we will not have covered for the exam. So un I don't write the exam. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So if you want me to go slower, if the class wants me to go slower, like... 75% speed, mm -hmm. Do you know, then I can, it's no problem. Uh, it just means then at the end of the semester, there'll be some topics not covered, mm -hmm. you know. It's unfortunately, my hands are very much tied. I have so many things that need to be done in such a time. And I have never heard of a good idea for how to, you know, get it all covered but still being able to go slower you know yeah I was talking to Neil about it earlier in the week mm -hmm. you know uh, and Neil, Neil has some ideas of things that can be done. I don't know if he's talked to you yet, has he? Oh, no. Anyways, Neil and I were talking about this earlier in the week, so I think Neil might be using some... I, I'm not sure. He might have an idea for some EAP time that could be used to help. Yeah, with the physics. Anyways, I'll leave that up to Neil. He says he has a plan, so... Right, uh, are we talking about this one first? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Which question? What on ID number? You're saying seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything before seven that needs to be done? One nine one. One nine one. Yeah. Oh, ID for number seven is one nine one. You need number two. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, the plane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We said we'll do this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. So let's have a look at this. Yeah, if you tried it, that's great. That's great. Let's have a look. I said it might be a little bit hard for you. Okay. To fly straight and level, can you all see? Yeah. yeah. To fly straight and level, an airplane must be in equilibrium. Its wings provide lift, and the total upward force must equal the weight. Well, you knew that already. In the diagram, the airplane is moving away from you, into the paper. Uh, the lift force is L1, L2, both act 3 metres from the centre of gravity. L1 is 12.5 kilonewtons. Show that L2 must also be 12.5 Kilo newtons. Now, do we know the weight of the plane? Mm -hmm. No, we don't. But actually, we don't need to know. Now, when you're looking at this picture, the plane, is it moving towards you or away from you? Away. From away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, how do we prove that L2 must be 12.5 kilo newtons? Well, the trick here is that it must be in equilibrium. That must mean the total turning force clockwise mm -hmm. must equal the total turning force anti-clockwise. Okay? So far so good? Now, where will we take the turning point? There's only one place that's suitable. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we don't know the weight. Yeah. So this will be 3L1 mm -hmm. must equal 3L2. So that means L1 must equal L2. And actually, which one do we know? L1. We know L1. Uh, by the way, clockwise or anti-clockwise? Clockwise. Anti-clockwise. Clockwise equals anti-clockwise.
Ja? 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 Trust me. I trust you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Question, Peter? No? Question? That part's okay? Yeah. yeah? Okay. B. If the pilot wants to turn the airplane left, he must make it roll anti-clockwise, as shown in the picture there. If the L2 is increased to 13, but the L1 remains the same, is it? If the L2 is increased to 13 kilonewtons, but the resultant force on the airplane is to remain zero, what must happen to L1? Okay, now it's getting a little bit harder, but look. Mm -hmm. You actually know in part A what the weight must be now, because you also know that in part A, L1 plus L2 must equal W. So you know the W is 2, 5, 0, 0, 0 newtons. Okay. Now, what's happening in part B is that the plane, uh, what do we say, the L2, the L1, uh, the L2 increases to 13,000. The L1, we don't know. But, what's the weight? It must be the same, right? Unless passengers have jumped out of the plane, the weight is the same. So we can clearly see what the L1 must be. One, uh, 12,000 newtons. So the question was, what must happen to L1? L1 must decrease by how much? 500 newtons. 500. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Scroll down. <coughs> I see you writing still. <coughs> I like those. My favorite one is the chocolate. <laughs> you don't like it? It's delicious. Have you tried chocolate? No, I don't try chocolate. I try, try chocolate. Oh, it's delicious. I said you have banana lights, man. Nah, that's okay. <laughs> chocolate is the nicest one. Okay. Uh, Flavoured milk. Have <laughs> you tried the chocolate one? Yeah. Oh, a different one. Okay, can I go to the next part? Yeah. yeah. So, C. <laughs> what is the total moment? Uh about the center, no, they actually tell you about the center of gravity. So, they want you to calculate the turning force here at the center of gravity. Mm. Okay. So, the total turning force. Now, it doesn't really matter. I think usually what they do, now I'm not sure, but I think mm. usually we say anti clockwise is positive mm -hmm. and clockwise is negative. It's not a big deal though. So, total anti mm -hmm. minus mm -hmm. total clock. Um, what is the turn in force anti clockwise in this picture? Uh, anti clockwise is this one, isn't it? No, no, it's not. Yes, thank you. Times 3 minus. 12,000 times 3. Yeah. yeah. So, what's that? 3,000? Yeah. Newton meters anti-clockwise. Because it's a positive. So, I'll just leave it like that, actually. I'll make anti-positive and, obviously... The clockwise is negative. Mm -hmm. 
You know, like when we say right is positive and left is negative, yeah? That's just our choice. You can actually do it the other way. Okay, so it wasn't that bad, was it? No. Uh, what question do we need to see next? That's number two. Seven. Okay, we skip down to seven. Now, what was so hard about seven, Peter? This one, is it? Yeah? Yes, this one? Now, that looks very similar to the other one. So, what's... But well, seven looks just like six. No, I, I'm not saying it's the same. I'm saying it's similar. So, my question is, what is so what is harder about seven than, say, six? Or five? Or four? What's so great about number seven? That's what I want to know. Because a few of you said number seven. Guys, sorry, what, what's with the silence? A few of you said you want number seven. I asked you what's so great about number seven. Mm -hmm. Am I not going to get an answer? <laughs> do you want me to do number seven? Why? I just want to know. Like, I will do seven. I just, in my head, I just, as a teacher, I want to know what was hard about seven that was different to the other questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but should they have not got it in an earlier question? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just trying to understand if someone could do one to six, why all of a sudden couldn't they do seven? That's what I'm thinking. Uh, oh, no, hang on. Truth's starting to come out now. Also five, huh? Yeah, possibly six as well. Yeah, okay. Maybe four too, yeah. Okay. No, guys, I don't want you to, like, okay, look, I know when you're faking doing work, okay? So I just want honest answers. I'll do seven if you want me to do seven, mm -hmm. but if there's a question before seven that you need me to do, I'll do it. That's why we're having time now on this. So, will I do one before seven, or will I do seven? Five. Okay, thank you. Five. A uniform wooden beam of length 7.4 and mass 55. The beam is suspended by two ropes positioned at 1.5 and 5, away from one end of the beam as shown in the diagram below. Uh, rope 1 and 2 have tensions T1 and T2. Determine the values of T1 and T2. Okay, let's have a look. Now, I'll just quickly draw this picture here. Um, we have this here. What's wrong, son? We have T1. We have T2. And... We have weights, do we? Yeah. Where is it? The 55, is it? Yeah. Is that the only weight? Yes. 55 G. Now, what is the distance from here to here? 1.5. 1.5. And how long is this? It's 7.4. So from here to here is 3.6, isn't it? No, I thought it's, it's 7.4, isn't it? That's 3.2. Oh, sorry. So what is it? 3.7. Yeah, but then it would be 2.2, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And then here to here? 1.3. It's 1.3. Okay, and then the last one has to add up to 7.4. So 7.4 minus those, what do you get? 2.4. 2.4? Okay. I know, but for fun, let's just write them in. But you're right, I was thinking we don't really need the last one, do we? Yeah. But look, now our picture looks nice. We have all the lengths on it. Yeah. All right. Uh, where will we put the turning point? T2. Why not? T2. Why not? So, if I make this the turning point here... <clears throat> Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Clockwise. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah? yeah. I think so. Yeah, go and have yeah. a good look at the clock there, uh, David. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's green, though. Here's the center of the clock. Mm -hmm. Here's the hour hand. It's at what time? It's at 9 o'clock. You're pushing up here. Yeah. Up clockwise. Ah, okay. So, um, firstly, we say, what's this distance here? That is 2.2 plus 1.3 times T1. That should equal 1.3 times 55 times 9.81. Correct. So, what do we get for our T1? 200.4. Uh, yeah, 200 newtons about, is it? Yep. Now, how can we easily get T2? Well, we just simply say T1 plus T2 should equal 55G. So we can then easily get T2 to be... 339.2. So, okay, so 200 and 339, is it? Mm-hmm. 200 and 339 newtons. Okay. Clockwise and the anti-clockwise. Mm. Yeah. So is 200 uh, significant? It is. Well, it depends. You see, the... To be very careful with the, the verbs here. So if I said to you, round your answer to three significant figures, then you would round the answer to 200. If somebody showed me the number 200, I said, how many significant figures? Well, I'd say it's one. You know? But I mean, I, suppose, I know it seems a bit confusing. Suppose I have 200.4. Mm -hmm. How would you write that as three significant figures? Uh, It'd be 200. It just so happens that it's also one significant figure here. Mm -hmm. You know? This is what I'm saying is the, the verbs. I say round your answer to three significant figures, which actually can make the answer, in this case, one significant figure because of the value being 200.4. You know? Yeah, but be just careful with the language. You know? Like if I gave you a number, a million, how many significant figures is that? It's one. Mm -hmm. Okay. But suppose you had a calculation and the answer was nine 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 nine, and I said round it to five significant figures. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll, all, it'll still be a million. Two significant figures. Mm -hmm. It's still a million. You know. Okay. Uh, next one, please. What do we need to do next? What's next? Number seven. Number seven. Okay. A uniform plank of wood, mass 8.6, 2.4 meters long, is balanced on two supports, placed 0.5 from each end. A child of 20.3 sits 0.3 from one end. Where's that child on the diagram? Oh, there. Now, what's interesting here, it says it's balanced on two supports, placed point... Okay, so they're both point 0.5 from the ends, aren't they? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. So when I look at this picture, I can see that the reaction at A and the reaction at B definitely won't be equal. Uh, which one will be bigger from the picture? The reaction at A or B? B. B. B, yeah. B is supporting more weight at its end than A is at its end. Right, so let's draw the diagram. Um, so I know there's an OR here, and there's an S here, and uh, I know this distance, uh, it's 0.5, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. I also know there's a weight in the middle. What was the weight? 8.6 G? Yeah. Now, how long was this uh, beam? 2.4. So is this 0.7 then, here to here? Yeah. 0.7 meters. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, and this is 0 0.7, and this is 0 0.5. Okay. Now we have to put in the, the, the child. Where was the child? The child was here, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, so maybe I won't put the 0.5 in just yet. Oh, okay. Sorry, I should put the other ones in first. Uh, sorry, what did you say? 8.6. 8. 8. 8. G. Uh, and then, what is here? Uh, yeah, but what weight? Uh, 8.3. G. G. And then here? 30.2. 30. 30. 30. G. Okay, well, some of the lengths I still know. This is still 0. 0.7. Yeah. And this here is still 0. 0.7. Uh, do they give us this distance? Yeah. Okay. What is it? Yeah. Zero point three. Zero point three. Yeah. And so that makes this zero point two. Yeah. Uh, these are both in meters, of course. And do we get this distance? Yes. Yeah. Zero point three five. Point three five meters. So then that makes this one here. Point one five meters. Okay. So I can make two equations. I can say or plus s equals. 20 point G, uh, 20 point three plus 8.6 plus 30.2 G. Well, what is that, please? Times 9.81. Okay, so I'll say five <coughs> seven nine point eight <coughs> newtons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now let's look at the turning forces. What would be a good turning point to use? Uh, yeah. Let's use four. Okay. Now nobody else. This question is for David. Ah, are you David? Yeah. You wish you were David. Uh, <laughs> David, yes. clockwise or anti-clockwise? <laughs> David. Okay. Is he right? Maybe. I don't tell him. Is he right or wrong? Yes. He's right. Okay. Go, go for it now. This one. Okay, this one? <laughs> yeah, okay. And this one? Is he right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think you've got this now. Uh, okay, so the first, let's do the antis first. Uh, what is that? 0 0.2 times 20.3, 9.81, yeah? Plus um, 1.4 times s. That's the other one, isn't it? Yeah. From here. 1.4 times s. Now that should equal uh, 0 0.7 times 8.6 times 9.81. Right? Mm -hmm. And then the last one, uh, 1.4 1.55, is it? Yeah. Yes. Plus 1.55 times 30.2 times 9.81. Yeah? So this gives us me the S. <laughs> Too many numbers, huh? What did you get? 300. What did you get, Ming, when you did this? Did you not do this last night? Yeah, I did. Yeah? I didn't have it. Oh, Ming. I can drive it. Oh, Ming. You have a calculator, don't you? What you got? Uh, 320 newtons. 300? I don't know. Maybe it's because I use money. What did you get? Okay, nothing. You're, you're calculating it? Yeah. 
Let's just check. 0 0.2, 20, 0 0.3, 9.81, 1, yeah? Mm -hmm. Then the next one is to S. 1.4 and S, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the clockwise. 0 0.7, 8.6, 9.81. 1, and then 1.55. Yeah. Isn't it? 30.2, 9.81, yeah. So what's S? 12.5. 12.5? No. Wait. No, it should be in the hundreds. Gonna make sure the last most three hundred three three hundred and three. And I've okay, so now I have three different answers. I have three hundred and three, three hundred and twenty, and three hundred and forty. Okay, it can't be all of them. <laughs> Come on guys, you all have calculators, you're all engineers. Uh, 0 0.2 right, it's from here to here. Isn't that 0 0.2? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, oh, that's from here to here. Isn't that 1.55? Okay. Isn't no, it? Uh, no, I'm yes. Yes. Oh, sorry, no, I mean to say, sorry, here to up to here, 1.55. Okay. Okay, yeah. The S is 0.7 plus 0.7. Yeah, correct, yeah, 1.4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By S was what? By S was what? Why is S left? Yeah. Why is S left, David? <laughs> why is the S here on the left? Which S? Yeah, why is... I, do, why do I write it here on the left and not on the right? I don't Okay. Anybody else? Why is S on the left? Anti-clockwise anti equals oh, clockwise. David! Ming wants to know why is S anti-clockwise. Please explain it to her. Okay. If you saw on the clock, look at the clock. Look at the clock. Look at the clock. Look, look at the clock. Yeah. The the ticking arm is going to the. Wait, hang on. It's going to get the fifteen seconds now. <laughs> right. So clockwise. this is the center. Yeah. Which is this point. Mm -hmm. So when it's at three o'clock, wait. Okay, so the S force is going up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So which way will that make it turn? Anti, anti or clockwise? Anti. 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 So it's anti. So if we just know that. All of no. Just know that anti is the way that the <laughs> other way. Okay, thank you, David. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the opposite of clockwise. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> sorry, please do it for all of them. Do it for all of them. Sorry, sorry. Abdello, okay. It's going to <laughs> Right, well, I'll, look, I'll use the hour hand here. So, the first one, this one here. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Is that line? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. so, hang on, so hang on. As it's going like this. Hang on, I'll show you. There's that nine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, if I hang a weight on the nine, mm -hmm. it'll make it turn anti clockwise. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the or doesn't do anything because the or is at the center. Mm -hmm. Right? The next one is this guy here. So hang on, let me just put the hand on the other side, because mm -hmm. really I need the hand to go all the way across, but I'll just turn it around. Okay, so if I put it over here now. So here the C, or sorry, the, the weight will be pushing it down, so it'll make it turn clockwise. Okay. This one here will be here pushing it up, make it turn anti-clockwise. And the last one here will be at the end pushing it down, so it'll make it turn clockwise. <laughs> it's like I'm a, a kindergarten teacher, you know? The time is. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't set You the time. You changed the Right now, come on, give me the S here, properly, come on, get me the S. 341.7. What is it? 341.7. So 342, is it? Yeah. yeah, and so then we can easily get the OR from this. So what's the OR now? Say again? Two three eight. Two three eight newtons. 
Okay. You get that using R plus S is equal to five two nine five eight, right? Yeah. Get the R by using this one. Because we know the S. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, what's yeah. next? What top? What did we do last time? Was it? Oh, we did. Um, cantilevers. We did cantilevers as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, hang on. Let me just see here. What's number eleven? Mm, yeah. Okay. Right. Eleven now. An engineer is designing a bridge but has to consider the forces acting when a lorry is driving across it as shown. Mm. The bridge is designed to be 80 metres long, will have a weight of 2 times 10 to the 6 newtons, and a lorry of weight 3 times 10 to the 5 is placed 15 metres to the right of support 1. Find the magnitude of mm. both supports S1 and S2. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, first equation we can make is pretty straightforward. S1 plus S2 equals this plus this, isn't it? Yes. So what's that? It's uh, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 plus 2 million, isn't it? So is that 23? 1, 2, 3, 4. That's right, isn't it? <coughs> two point three million. Yeah. yeah. One, or two, or three. Or no, or one more zero. zero. Uh, okay. Oh, we and um, we have to make another equation. Uh, I'm going to make S one the turning point. Okay. Now, nobody else but Ming this time. Ming, clockwise or anti-clockwise? Um, clockwise or anti-clockwise? This is turning point. Clockwise? Clockwise? Uh, anti. anti. So this and this equals this one. Right, what distance is this here? They say it. It's 15, isn't it? So 15 times 3 times 10 to the 5 plus, and what's this distance here? It's 40. 40 times 2 times 10 to the 6, that will equal, and what's this distance? 80. 80 S2. So, what can we get from this? S2. And then we can get S1. Right, so, let's see. So, 1.56, is it? Times 10 to the 6 newtons. Yeah? Yes. And then what will be the uh, further one? 1.05. No? 1.05? Yeah. Times 10 to the 6 newton? No, no, no. no. S2. 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 Ah, okay. So it'll be 0, 06. Yes. Yeah. And then this one is. Uh, it would have to be 1.05. Two four, yeah. yeah times, times ten to the six newton. Yeah. The second one, that would be that's right. Okay. This is okay? Yeah. yeah. It is suggested that moving the bridge supports closer together might reduce the forces S one and S two. Discuss the effectiveness of this idea. Is it correct? And are there any other advantages to moving them closer? So if you move the S one and the S two closer what will be the same and what will be different? So S1 plus S2 will still be um, the same. Yeah. Two, there's no difference here. However, um, in this picture here, if you move S1 and S2 closer, will they still have the same values as before? Well, let's just go back to the equation here. The distances would change, wouldn't they? Um, this distance here would become smaller because mm -hmm. 
because the turning point would be like here. Yes. So this 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 would go down. Um, would all the distances go down? Yes. The next S1. one would go down. Yeah. And then what about the S two distance? We'll go down. Yeah. We'll go down as well. Yeah. <coughs> so okay. I don't know. I don't really think there'll be much. So it says discuss the effectiveness of this idea. I don't really think it'll do much. I don't think there'll be much of a difference. So uh, the answer would say um, there would not be much of a difference. However, there will be one difference that I think is important. However, there will be one difference that I think is important, and I think this is what they want you to say. Can anybody think of an advantage of moving the pillars closer together? And it has something to do with the centre of the bridge. Now, if you want to use your imagination here, imagine the bridge was kind of flexible, like a piece of wood, okay? Yeah. If the supports are very far apart, what might happen at the centre of the bridge? Right. Yeah, or it would might sag slightly. Yeah. If you move the supports closer together, would that improve or get worse? Improve. improve. So I think the uh, one other advantage, there would not be much of a difference. However, um, um, there would be less sag at the center so if you have them far apart you might get it sag a little bit at the center but if you bring them closer together you will get less of this yeah. okay it depends on the material so for example if this was a stone bridge I don't think there'd be any sag really at the center however if this was a suspension bridge a metal, like, made of metal, like iron or something like this. Uh, I think because this metal is quite flexible, it could snap, snap uh, side or possibly snap at the center. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's next now? Can't leave a question. There's only one, and you couldn't do it. Oh. Sorry, there was a question. Yeah. Like, you said when you move it to the middle, the direction of all the forces go down. Meaning they all go um, anti-clockwise. What are you asking me? Like, can you go up to where yeah. you change? Like, you said when you put it, yeah, this is where you put the arrows all points down. Meaning the direction of all forces. Uh, no, not necessarily. I would actually have to. What I would need to do is like reduce these numbers by say a meter or something and see how the S2 gets affected okay. um, I think there wouldn't be a huge difference to the value of S2 if all of these reduced by now there will be a difference but I don't think it will be a significant difference I think the most significant thing that will happen is you'll get less sagging mm -hmm. effect um, I mean at the end of the day, S1 and S2 still has to be 2.3 million. There's nothing you can do about that. You know. Right, let's have a look here at the cantilever. So you've got this uh, set situation here. Um, a uniform shop sign of mass 8.5 with... Oh, that's okay, so let's draw this. Wall. This is here. Mm -hmm. uh, does this go to the end? Yes. Yeah. So the first weight is, where is this one located? What's this distance here? No, not quite. Why is there, yeah, that distance is 0 0.3, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now, does this structure have a mass? It does, 1.5. And what's its length? 1. So this here, uh, what is it? 
1.5G. And what was this one actually? 8.5G. And this distance here, here to here, 0 0.5 meters. And so this distance here, 0.2. Do we know any other lengths? What else do we know? Oh, good. So that's 0 0.8. And that's one, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So by Pythagoras, we can get the hypotenuse here, mm -hmm. which is what? So square root Wait. 0. 0.8 squared plus one. So square root 1.64, what's that? Come on, come on. 1.28 meters. Can we get the angle? Might what 1.6? 0.8, not eight. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, excuse me. <coughs> there we go. Right, what's the theta? Tan inverse 0.8 over 1. 38.65 degrees. Fine, so what the heck is so hard here? Not the first one. Okay, fine. Determine <laughs> the tension in the wire. So, I'll draw the tension in here. I should look horizontally or vertically? Yeah, well, or should I look? Yeah, do you know what I'll do? We'll take this as the turning point, and I don't really care about the horizontal. Why not? Why is the horizontal not important here? If this is the turning point, there's no torque. There's no torque, because it passes through the turning point. So I only really care about this side. How big is this side? Yeah. T cos or sine? Mm. Sine. Sine theta. Right. Yeah. This is theta. Clockwise or anti clockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise. Anti clockwise. Right, 0. 0.5 times 1.5 g plus 0. 0.7 times 8.5 g. That should equal uh, 1 man. times t, 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 t sine theta. theta. So if I divide by sine, I have my t already. Zero point seven, yeah? Point three and point two? What are you asking me? The first one is point five and the second one is point seven. So what's the T here? One zero five point three five. One zero five five point three five meters. Okay, so we'll say 105 newtons is the answer. Okay, next, what is the horizontal force exerted here? So look, this force here, we'll call it X, what should that equal? It should equal the only other horizontal force. T cos theta. Equal? Equals what? Uh, uh, 82.32. 82.32. Okay, 82. Right. Lastly, what is the vertical force on the wall? So that's this one here, the Y. So you can say Y plus T sine theta should equal 10 G, 98.1 Newtons. Yeah. So 98.1 minus 105 sine 38.65 will be the answer. 34.4, Newton. Thank you. Um, seems possible, maybe.
right. You got that written down? Mm-hmm. Now, I think after lunch we're in a different room, aren't we? We're in like B3 or something, isn't there? Caption that hole. No. No, I thought the top. This is the old table. So, what room are we in B3. after lunch? Yeah, that's right, B302 or something, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I know, I'll have to bring the projector from the office. Um, because this room is used for some exam this afternoon. Okay. All right. What's wrong? The length, the length of the sign. Yeah, the it's point 0.6. Yeah. yeah. And the center, the weight, will be in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 